Greetings. I'm Veronix Systems Engineer Jason Green, and I'd like to welcome you to the Configuring a Deep Freeze Workstation Install File video tutorial. This is the first of several video tutorials we'll be producing, providing instruction on how to take advantage of some of Deep Freeze's most important features. Once you've downloaded and extracted the Deep Freeze Enterprise software, browse to the root of the extracted folder and run the dfent.exe application. The dfent.exe application installs the Deep Freeze Enterprise Console and Deep Freeze Configuration Administrator onto a workstation or server that will act as the Deep Freeze Management Console. These applications can be accessed by clicking Start, All Programs, Veronix, and Deep Freeze 7 Enterprise. I personally prefer to create shortcuts to both of these applications directly on my desktop. To create a Deep Freeze Workstation install file, double-click the Deep Freeze Configuration Administrator. Configuration settings are spread across five unique tabs, Passwords, Drives, Embedded Events, Maintenance, and Advanced Options. The Password tab provides you the ability to specify up to 15 unique passwords. These passwords can be one of two different types, Workstation or Command Line. A workstation password provides the ability for you to access the Deep Freeze boot control screen on a workstation containing Deep Freeze. This can be handy if you are physically in front of a workstation and don't have access to the Deep Freeze Enterprise Console. The boot control screen provides you the ability to reboot a workstation thawed or frozen as well as modify the network settings. It's also possible to specify a period of validity for this password. This can be handy in the case that you have a contractor working on site who needs access to the boot control screen on workstations, but will only be on site for a period of a month. In this case, the password is valid from February 1st, 2012 and expires at midnight on February the 29th, 2012. The command line password allows you to take advantage of dfc.exe, our command line interface. Our command line interface provides the ability for you to utilize existing third-party desktop management tools such as Altiris, Landesk, Zenworks, or SECM to control and administer your deep freeze environment. The next tab is the Drives tab. The Drives tab provides us the ability to configure which drives on a workstation will be frozen and which will remain unfrozen or in a thawed state. By default, all drives are selected. Deselect them all and select only the drives that you wish to be frozen. If your workstations only have a C drive and you wish to extend some level of persistent storage options to your users, Deep Freeze provides the ability for you to create thaw spaces. Thaw spaces are virtual partitions that are hosted on a frozen Deep Freeze drive. To create a thaw space, Select the drive letter you wish to assign it, the size that you wish it to be in either gigabytes or megabytes, as well as whether or not you wish this drive to be visible to standard users. Once your settings have been set as desired, click the Add button. The thaw space will appear in the bottom box. Deep Freeze provides the ability for you to specify up to eight thaw spaces. The Embedded Events tab allows you to configure four different types of events that you want to take place on a workstation at a predetermined time. Restart, shutdown, idle time, and maintenance are the four different types of events. The restart and shutdown events are identical with the obvious exception that one will restart a workstation and one will shut it down. In this example, we'll provide an event name of shutdown. We'll select Friday and 6 p.m. As configured, any workstation that this workstation install file is installed on will shut down on Fridays at 6 p.m. You can optionally allow the opportunity for users to cancel this event if someone's using the workstation. Lastly, we can display a message to anyone who might be using the workstation that the event's about to take place, as well as customize what that message says. The idle time event allows you to specify a period of time 
after which a workstation will automatically either reboot or restart. The idle time event is particularly handy in an environment in which your workstations are available to the public. Restarting a workstation on a regular basis will ensure that the workstation remains in its clean and pristine condition, ready for use by the next person to approach it or use it. Finally, the maintenance event. The maintenance event is a pretty powerful feature and provides you the ability to specify a period of time during which you want your deep freeze workstation to reboot itself into a thawed state. While in a thawed state, patches, updates, and software can be applied or installed. As with the other events, we have the ability to define which days we want the event to take place. But what's different about the maintenance event is instead of simply specifying one time, we specify a period of time during which this workstation sits in a thawed state. In this example, on Tuesday night at 9 p.m., the workstation will reboot into a thawed state, and it will remain in a thawed state until 3 a.m. on Wednesday. It's very important and highly recommended that whenever a workstation is placed into a thawed state, we ensure that the disable keyboard and mouse option is selected. This will prevent anyone from walking up to that workstation while it's in its thawed state and manipulating the workstation. Deep Freeze provides the ability for you to select one of three different types of maintenance events. None, during which a workstation will simply reboot, place itself into a thawed state until the end of the maintenance period, then reboot itself frozen. The None option is handy if you utilize a third-party tool to push updates or patches down to the workstation. Batch File provides the ability for you to reboot your workstation into a thawed state and run a batch file. At the end of the maintenance period, once again, the workstation will reboot itself into a frozen state. And Windows Update. If we select Windows Update as our maintenance event, in this case, this workstation will reboot itself into a thawed state at 9 p.m. on Tuesday. It will contact the public Windows Update server, download important updates only, and at the end of the maintenance period, once again, reboot itself into a frozen state. Several things need to be considered when configuring a Windows update in the Deep Freeze Configuration Administrator. It's important that automatic updates are disabled on any workstation that has a Windows update maintenance event configured. In addition, it's important to ensure that the maintenance period provides a large enough window to allow the downloading and installation of Windows updates, which at times can run into the hundreds of megabytes. If you have thousands of workstations in your environment, all configured to do a Windows update at the exact same time, this can obviously create network bandwidth issues. The Maintenance tab provides further configuration options for the batch file and Windows Update maintenance events. If batch file has been selected, the Maintenance tab provides you the ability to specify which user credentials for either Microsoft or Novell are to be used to run the batch file. In addition, it provides an area where you can create a batch file, open a batch file, and save your batch file. If Windows Update has been selected and you have an SUS or WSUS server on premises, the Maintenance tab provides you the ability to configure the location of that server as well as the target ID if you're running a WSUS server. The Advanced Options tab provides access to several additional configuration options. The Network Options section by default is set to LAN. When set to LAN, broadcasting is used for workstations to report into the Deep Freeze Enterprise Console. If your IT environment is comprised of multiple subnets or VLANs, it's important that you change this setting to LAN, WAN, and specify either a console IP address or a console name. In addition, you can modify the default communication port used by Deep Freeze. The Advanced Options section contains settings and access to settings that should only ever be modified if instructed to do so by Pharonix Technical Support. 
the stealth mode area allows you to specify whether or not you want deep freeze icons to be displayed in the system tray. I highly recommend that you never deselect both of these options, or it will be impossible to tell at a glance whether or not deep freeze is in a frozen or thawed state. Finally, if you wish to specify a license key that's different from that which was specified during the installation of the Enterprise Console and Configuration Administrator, you can do that here. Once all your settings are set as you wish, click the Create button and select Create Workstation Install File. Browse to the location that you want Install File to be saved to, specify a name, and click the Save button. You'll receive confirmation, and your workstation install file has been created. The workstation install file can now be distributed to the workstations that you wish to protect with Deep Freeze. Once the installation has been completed on the workstations, they will report into the Deep Freeze Enterprise Console.